Boeing facing a Senate subcommittee next week on the growing safety concerns plaguing the company. And this comes as the embattled airplane manufacturer searches for its next chief executive officer. Joining us to discuss is Robert Springarn. He's Milius Research Managing Director and Research Analyst for the Aerospace Defense and Space Sector. So obviously, Rob, it doesn't feel like the pressure on Boeing is letting up. Let's talk briefly about that committee hearing next week. What what do you think we could learn new, if anything, out of that hearing? And what does a sort of best case scenario look like for Boeing? Well, I think the best case scenario is going to rely on a lot more than just what happens next week. You know, we may learn some new details from the whistleblower or, the, or those who testify next week. And it's clear, and, you know, it's important that there's government oversight here, that they're asking questions and turning up the pressure, so to speak. And we've seen, I think, uh, incremental response from Boeing, and it's going to continue. And Rob, I'm just curious, um, you, listen, you know the company backwards and forwards. What do you make of the job Calhoun has actually done, sort of navigating the company through this crisis? What what grade do you give him, Rob? You know, it, it's it goes back to culture. We've talked about culture a lot with this company, and unfortunately, all of the executives, I think, have uh, been disserviced, if you will, by the movement of Boeing's headquarters out of Seattle in the early 2000s and to Chicago and, and, and now Northern Virginia. And so there's a, there's a bit of a um, distance between the factory floor and the executives. And I think that uh, Dave Calhoun, it, 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 you know, maybe didn't have all the information he needed. The question is, you know, how could he improve that? I think the message is getting through. Unfortunately, it's taken a long time. We've had a lot of incre incremental movement and response in that message. You get the sense that we're at the point where the changes are gonna be more significant than they have in the past, especially when you're changing the management team, or you're changing the people at the top of the company. Rob, do you think Calhoun will make it to the end of the year? I don't know that he necessarily will, but it's not, I don't know that it's because of anything that happens at Boeing. I think there's a chance they may select the CEO before the end of the year, and then the timing would be sooner. Who should take the reins, Rob, in your opinion? Any, any candidates? Well, I, you know, we here at Mealy has actually downgraded the stock uh, a couple, you know, about 10 days ago, because we just felt the overhangs were too significant for the stock to work in the meantime, while they're looking for a manager, you know, replacing uh, Dave Calhoun, uh, while they're waiting to ramp up on their production. You know, one of one of the folks that I think would be a very good candidate is Pat Shanahan, former uh, 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 acting secretary of defense and somebody with a 30 year career at Boeing prior to that. I also mentioned in one of my recent notes that an out-of-the-box choice could be somebody like SpaceX C COO, Gwynne Shotwell. You need somebody with an engineering background, with a production floor experience, program management. So not you don't want a salesperson, you don't want a finance person, and a, and a bunch of the other suggestions have focused in those areas. I don't think that's the right answer. Obviously, this would be a very challenging position for any of these folks to take on. So it's not just finding the right person, it's convincing them to take the job, right? Do you think that the, the idea of taking on this challenge would be something that would be appealing to some of these folks? I think so, I, but I don't, I don't know personally. The two people I mentioned, I haven't spoken to. I don't know what their interest level would be. So this is based in, in, in Pat Shanahan's case. I, I, I know him, but it's been some time. That said, I, I would imagine the company is very important. And he, of course, is the acting CEO at Spirit Aerosystems, which is involved in a lot of this right now. Um, so I think there, there's a possibility. I, again, I mentioned Gwen Shotwell. You know, it, it, it's probably a big ask to have her leave something like a SpaceX. One of the things that folks do uh, look for when they change roles at the CEO level is where is the stock? Is the stock near a bottom? And th therefore, if I can get in there and do what I need to do and improve the company, can I benefit from an increase in the stock? And so that might be appealing to some folks who are out there. And Rob, finally, I just wanted to switch gears while we're talking about leadership and ask you about another stock in your coverage, and that's Hexel, which just mm -hmm. announced that the unexpectedly that the former CEO of Spirit Aerosystems, uh, Tom Gentile, was going to take over at its CEO. This was not greeted very enthusiastically by the street, to put it lightly. What do you make of that move, and is that a mistake? I think I, I, I know both companies fairly well. I know both CEOs well. 
Um, I, I do think it was a surprise to the market since Tom Gentile recently left Spirit Aero Systems and the problems there were similar to Boeing. There were operational issues on the factory floor, execution missteps, if you will. And uh, unfortunately, folks are going to look at Tom through that lens. He's a very uh, capable person. Uh, I, I, you know, I've worked with him for many, many years. He, he um, I think he understands the industry extremely well. This is a little bit different. You know, he's going from an aerostructures or fuselage assembly company to a material a materials uh, science company, if you will. Hexel manufactures carbon uh, fiber composites that go into those structures. So it's a little bit of a different um, type of work, but he's he's familiar with those things. But understandably, after what's happened at Spirit, and he did preside over much of it, there will be some questions as to whether that was the right choice. Rob, great insight and perspective. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming on the show. Pleasure.